Follow Me Foodie is the journey of all things culinary. This is an exploration where I learn about ingredients, techniques, and the origins and history of food. Let's indulge. Oh, I remember so vividly, like walking into the door of Naturno. I was, I parked my car, I was in Gastown, and I don't really know how else to say it, but honestly, it smelled like Vancouver grass outside. And then as soon as I opened that door, it was just, it was just the scent of beautiful white alba truffles. Hi, Phil. Hi, Mijin. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you too. So I'm stoked about tonight's dinner. Oh, so am I. I don't know how much how much better it can get. As soon as you smell it, you're like, you're there. Yeah, so what are we making today? Well, why don't you follow me and I'll show you. Awesome, let's go. The turn on Gastown, it can kind of get overlooked because when you walk by, you might not necessarily notice it. But then walking into the restaurant, it's kind of long and narrow. And then the first thing you notice is the bar. So right away, I kind of think, okay, it's gonna be a cocktail inspired place. I can see lots of nice bottles there. It's gonna be maybe more drink focused because you don't see much of a kitchen. Um, and then you kind of see that we're gonna be sitting at the bar tonight and that there's this intimacy where I'm probably gonna be interacting with the chef or I'm gonna be interacting with the barman there. Um, it's kind of a really intimate setting and so it kind of made that white alba truffle dinner experience even more special. So this is actually, I mean, some people call it a fungus or a mushroom, but it's actually the fruit of the fungus, is that correct? Yeah, it's not, it's actually not a mushroom. Often there's a misconception that truffles are mushrooms. And in fact, they are not mushrooms at all. It's actually the fruit of a fungus. And, um, you know, you being in Vancouver, um, I have limited resources to try all the truffles, but you can, you can get them from Italy, you can get them from Australia, you can get them from Oregon. Of course, they are prized differently and no truffles built the same, but um, it is actually a fruit of a fungus and not a mushroom. If you were to go out into the forest and you're in, Al in uh, Al Alba in Italy, and you found a great looking truffle in the ground and then marked that spot, and then you went there the next year, they'd most likely be nothing there. They, there's, it's sporadic to where, where they grow. So what are we making today? So we're gonna do a soft scrambled egg with chive, uh, which also comes with a warm croissant foam, and also a sous vide quail eggs yolk. Beautiful. We got everything coming here. Just uh, basically to do the soft scramble. So the process of cooking the scrambled eggs was to use a double broiler process. So he had a pot of boiling water, then he put a bowl on top of that, put the eggs in, and then he scrambled them on top so you don't have direct heat. So he's slowly cooking them just until they come together so they're still a bit runny and creamy. The egg, just for one person, one egg is fine. You know, if people want to do these kind of techniques at home, uh, it could be a main meal, really. It could? Okay. Yeah. So what is it with eggs and truffles? Why do they get together so well? Why do they go together so well? Well, eggs are... Delicious? Eggs are delicious, and they're not a huge flavor. They don't have huge flavor until you add flavor really to them, mm -hmm. whether it be butter or tonight truffle. So that's why we're going to start with a little bit of, uh, a little bit of brown butter in it. Okay. To give it a little bit of nuttiness. So you browned that earlier? Yeah, we browned that yeah. earlier. And we're just going to let this come up to temp. Uh, and that's why the chive also plays well into it. It gives it a little bit of vibrantness to, yeah. the, to the egg. The most interesting thing I took away from the cooking demo was definitely that croissant foam. I mean, I've, I've done things like that before, such as brown butter bread ice cream and brown toast ice cream. So I've done that infusion process with breads and liquids before, but croissant foam in particular was something new and different for me. And I thought it was, it was beautiful. I've made foams before, like uh, caramel foams and chocolate foams, but croissant foam is something I definitely want to try at home. Basically, I took whole croissants. Okay. And then equal parts of cream and milk. Okay. And uh, a little bit of salt. Uh, put it into uh, a pot up to a boil and then simmered it and then used an immersion blender and emulsified it down right. and then strained it out and then down into the ISI with a couple of hits of nitrous right. uh, so that'll expand it and give it a nice silky 
foaminess. So it's almost like a croissant reduction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you kind of like take all the juices yeah. of that or infuse yeah. it into the milk. Yeah, and then it's going to be really soft and velvety and light and light on the tongue. I know some people get totally turned off by foams, like, oh, that's so like 90s, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, a, there's such thing as bad foams and good foams. Foams done with application and thought, foams not done with application and thought. There's difference. Where did you get the idea for that, the croissant? The croissant foam? Oh. Actually, there is a chef uh, that was in New York that did this. And I thought it was a really interesting idea. Uh, he had done it with other bread products, right. so I decided to do it with a croissant. Nice. Uh, he had done a, uh, a brioche foam and a couple of other different bread foams. I just thought, since we're using eggs today, it's kind of a play on a breakfast. Yeah. So you get the egg and the croissant and it. everything. I got Yeah. And then the part of the, uh, the yolk, um, we took uh, just the yolk of the quail egg. And in here we have just uh, a canola oil. Uh, as you can see, we're at 145 Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. And uh, taped down so it sits into the water. Mm -hmm. And you just basically drop the yolk into it. Right. In about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, it's ready to go. So it's actually quite a rich dish when you have the truffles, the egg, and you have the creaminess yeah. of the croissant reduction. Yeah, and then with, yeah. Yeah, with the truffle on there, it just like elevates everything. Okay, partially I'm distracted because I noticed this bowl of truffles right behind you, these yeah. white truffles. Yeah, Can yeah. we talk about this product for a bit? Okay, so these are the uh, basically the king of truffles. Uh, they're from Alba, Italy. Yeah. And uh, they're only available for a couple of months out of the year. Um, they're highly prized, uh, extremely expensive, uh, and really sought after. Most people have this thing about black truffle versus white alba truffles, and of course, white alba truffles are superior and better. But they, they're just different. Um, they're, you know, the, one might be more expensive or more fragrant or whatever, but they're different. It's like cre comparing a very expensive caviar to a not as expensive caviar. It doesn't necessarily mean one's far superior. They're just different. And uh, how can you tell, like, a you know, good quality truffle as opposed to one that's maybe not so good? Is there anything you can look at? If you take a look at the truffle itself, <laughs> that's okay. We, we'll add that to the bill later. Oh, that's uh, awesome. The, uh, you can see that, I mean, you're always going to get a little bit of pitting and right. stuff like that. Yep. But when you take a look at it, it's the firmness is there. Yep. And of course, the aroma. The it's aroma beautiful. is the big thing. Um, I just want to use the perfume. Yeah. Right? And, and it's, and it's not. Forget vanilla. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not dark. It just has this this nice uh, kind of beigey color to it. Mm -hmm. It, uh, yeah, and of course you can smell the whole. My whole restaurant smells like truffle. Absolutely. When I opened it up, um, there's varying different uh, varieties of truffle. There's the black perigo. There's the black Italian summer. Uh, there's the Australian whites. There's even little mini white truffles from Oregon. Um, they all have uh, different pungencies, uh, different flavors. Um, this one is the most aromatic and the most flavor out of it. The one, the next one below it would be the French Black Perigot, and then it steps down from there. So some of the things, I mean, I had an idea of how to use the truffles and whatnot, but Bill kind of gave me that um, confirmation. Um, you know, with white alba truffles, usually that's the very last thing. It's like sprinkling of salt. It's just you do the shavings at the very end. You don't cook a white alba truffle. You kind of just use it as a, more or less the garnish on the top. Um, but it is the main focus, not the garnish. Yeah, these, uh, you would tend to go straight raw. You yeah. really don't want to cook them at no. all. No. Um, the, the black uh, perigos, uh, you can go either way. So with the black truffle, um, you, it does, you can apply heat to it if you like, but you don't have to necessarily cook them. You can shave them like the white alba truffles, but if you're going to apply heat to one, it would be the black truffle. Is there a difference between the smaller ones versus the larger ones? Like the yeah. concentration of flavors? Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, the, the smaller ones, will, which will still have quite a bit of fragrance to it, but of course the, the larger ones are, a little, are more mature. So. Right. They really admit it, they admit right. the flavor and the fragrance and all that. So. Very nice. And how do you store them? Um, personally, as you can see here, I have just basically a white cloth. Um, some people store them in uh, risotto like I have behind you there. Oh, okay. Uh, a little cup of risotto with a little mini truffle in there. Um, but I like to wrap them in paper towel. 
Yeah. And then into a Ziploc bag, squeeze the air out, Ziploc it, and into a cold fridge. Keep them I really nice that, and dry. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah, you don't want tons of moisture in there, or oh, they'll really start to go. Right. And, uh, and then change the paper towel every couple of days. Right. And they always use like dogs or pigs to be able to sniff them out, right? Tradi traditionally, it was it was the pigs. The yeah. pigs would go. And that's how people found out about truffles to begin with. Oh, was that pig eating? No, oh, it's a truffle. Right. This thing tastes great. And people uh, think pigs are stupid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're quite smart. But yeah, so the pig, they used to use truffle pigs. Yeah. Some people still do. But you have to be very quick to get the truffle because they like to eat them. Yeah. So you got to grab it away from them. Okay. Uh, to get away, because there was such a, a ratio of uh, maybe a bite out of one or this and that, they started training dogs. Okay. So dogs would sniff them out and uh, of course they would eat them. So it's 100%. Actually, did you know what I discovered last year? Um, that you can actually adopt a truffle tree in Italy. Oh really? Yeah, so you can pay, I think it's something like 500, don't quote me, I think it's like $500 a year or something. Right. And then you pay for somebody to go look after your truffle plot or your truffle right. tree. And then every year they will mail you your truffles. Ah. Yeah. It's an so, easier way of doing it than yeah. uh, flying all the way over so there. So instead of adopting children, you can now adopt truffles. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. This might actually be less expensive than a child. Well, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, yeah, I guess depends how many trees you want to adopt, That's right? That's true. Nice. So is this about ready? Or yeah, you want to start here? cooking? Let's start cooking. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here we got the uh, eggs that we already scrambled. Okay. And we had the, the uh, pot has been boiling, so the bowl is nice and hot, and we got the brown butter in there. So we're just gonna add the eggs to there. So is that about maybe like one or two tablespoons of brown butter? Yeah, a tablespoon is fine. Okay. A little bit of the uh, chives, but uh, you can go up to a teaspoon. It depends on the chives. Mm -hmm. As you can see right away, Starting to cook the heat is cooking right away. So you kind of want to control the heat a little bit because you want it to be a soft scramble. Mm -hmm. So you can pull it on and off. And it's going to keep cooking even after off, oh, off yeah. of the heat. Yeah, because yeah. this is still quite hot mm -hmm. underneath. Now, if you want now, you can uh, season the eggs if you want. Right. I tend to not do because I tend to finish all my seasoning with mold and salt on the plate. Beautiful, just at the end, right? Yeah. 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 There we go. Gorgeous. Mm. Okay, we'll just turn that off. All right, so these are ready. We'll just place those there for now. Okay, so you want it like a paste or a custard kind of texture? I like them quite soft. Yeah. Uh, you can go a little bit more on there. I just find it's the feel on the tongue, it is nice and like smooth creamy, and smooth, creamy. Yeah, buttery. Yeah, buttery, because there is no cream or anything in it, it's just the brown butter and the egg. Nice. Okay, so we'll grab the, uh, out of the water bath. The croissant foam. This is the croissant foam. Right. And then, the quail egg. And those were CV for under what temperature and for how long? 145 cell, uh, Fahrenheit. Okay. For an hour and 15 minutes. Hour and 15 minutes. You can go anywhere from, it's very forgiving, this technique. Yeah. You can go anywhere from an hour and 15 to an hour and a half, and you can hold them for up to another hour it until makes you're so ready. Easy, right? Yeah. If you're cooking for a lot of people, yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll also grab our truffle slicer yes. for the truffle. And how do you determine how thick or thin you want them? Well, you don't want to go super thick on these because you want thin, nice thin uh, uh, slice, but you know, quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. um, when they're thick, you don't want to have to, you don't want it to break. You just want it to kind of melt with the bread. Right, so. exactly. I learned a lot from Chef Bill about truffles, but one thing that I did learn was the application of truffles, the execution of how to shave them on. For example, um, you know, the whole either shaving them on or the different grade sizes, grading sizes, or if he wants to grate them or shred them, you know, depending on that. I, I kind of thought you just do what you want to do, but it's kind of, there was more of a thought process. It's like, what am I making? Um, how do I want to showcase the truffle? 
If it's, do I want a lighter kind of truffle flavor? So let's grate this. It's not, it's not about saving cost, but it's just about the application of it. What will highlight this truffle and this dish in the best way and how do I make them balance? And that's something really interesting. Oh, I thought you were gonna spoon feed me that. No. Oh, yeah. Maybe later. I can wait until this. All right, and now the foam. Now the croissant foam. And then we'll put on one of the yolks. Okay. And then if I could just reach across you here, grab some of the mold and salt. And a bit of the mold. I could wake up to that every day <laughs> so, and be so happy. So could I. Yeah. The, uh, Pretty nice. And then... Oh my god. I can't look. A little bit of the truffle on top. Yeah. But because these are only in season from about, wouldn't you say September until December? That's normally It uh, tends, tends to be more October. October? Yeah. Okay. But the these ones in the beginning, particular? Yeah, the Alba's. The beginning of October is when they kind of start. Yeah. Right now it's at the prime. We're okay. That November 1st to November 15th is kind of the prime, and the end of November is usually when they're done. I can handle that, like a month of this every day. Yeah. Yeah. That looks beautiful. So are we just gonna sit here and look at it, or? No. All right, let's not. dig in. Let's dig in. Okay, so right. should I mix this all together? How do I eat this? Uh, any way you want. You can try a little bit of one and a little bit of the other and then mix it together. And... Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of everything. So this is the foam, the egg, and the truffle. I'm gonna take a big bite. Of course. Okay. Mm. Oh my God, that was so good. Tasty. Oh, I'm gonna get in there. This... Mm. Can't, oh please. <laughs> um, you know, I was trying to keep calm on the outside, but inside I was kind of like exploding, like, mm, this is freaking good. It's like so rich, so creamy. That croissant pudding, like that really brings it together. That yeah, is that so good. It's good. Huh? But like the truffle I know is a highlight, but all the components, it makes the truffle even better. Yeah, it does. What a I, great match. Well, thank you. Stellar, awesome job. Awesome. Thank, thank you. you so much. So a big shout out to chef and owner, Bill Robitaille of Naturno in Gastown, Vancouver, for letting me cook truffles with you and teaching me a little bit more about the product. Thank you so much. Okay, well, everybody, welcome to the first and hopefully inaugural, I guess is the word I'm looking for, uh, white truffle dinner at Naturno. Um, we'll be taking you through 10 courses tonight, um, which Bill will be happy to, and I'm sure start discussing the food as it comes. So this truffle adventure has totally inspired me. Um, one of my, you know, follow me foodie dreams has been to attend the White Alba Truffle Festival in Italy. And this is definitely something that, I don't know, maybe we're a step closer, maybe we're not. I like to think we are. So let's try to make that happen next time.